Hi everyone and welcome back to the Austin B Media Podcast for the third episode in as many days. It's a confusing time as uh, Mark Ruffalo said in Avengers Endgame, but thanks again for to my patron Tom Blackburn for giving me this idea of having critics on to talk about movies. So today we're going to be talking about Cocaine Bear. <laughs> Excuse me, I inhaled air and it went the wrong way. With my guest Emmanuel, and let me know if I pronounce any of this wrong. Emmanuel Pagan Colon? Yeah, Pagan Colon. Don't worry, you're good. And this is coincidentally the second member of the International Film so- Critics Society Critics? Yeah, is it Society Critics or Critics Society? Either one, SC. So yeah, International Film Society Critics. And you also co founded a movie squad. Yeah, um, that's. Yeah. Yeah, welcome on. Glad to have you. Yeah, thank you so much, Austin. For people that don't know me, I follow Austin on Twitter since the beginning of this year. I think it was around Sundance that we started talking. And it's pretty good. I do most of my content in Spanish. I was like, let's talk about Cocaine Bear. I think it's one of the funniest films this year. And the original story is funny too. I was like, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah, I need to go back and because when it came out on Peacock, they released yeah. a, I, I don't know, was it a mockumentary or a documentary? No, it was a documentary. It was okay. a documentary. It was about the true story of the cocaine bear. Yeah. Yeah, so I need to watch that if it's still on the service because as still. we talked about before we uh, came on or hit, uh, before I hit record, Peacock's getting squirrely about, hey, This is a universal movie. Now we're going to take it off the service and put it on Prime Video. And oh, now it's also on uh, Peacock again. It's weird. And to address why we're talking about a movie that came out in February uh, and had a Blu-ray release in April of this year. For those who don't know, when I was doing building my calendar for movies I wanted to talk about with guests on this podcast... I saw that Cocaine Bear, for whatever reason, Universal Studios waited five months to put this on 4K Blu-ray. So I'm like, I'm going to use this excuse to talk about Cocaine Bear because it is technically now relevant. Because as we're recording this on September 19th, the 4K Blu-ray came out today. So yeah. Yeah, let me start by saying that, yeah, that was a really weird decision by... Universal. I'm not like saying any negative, but I just want to say that I waited because a friend of mine was like, Hey, I'm here at Best Buy. Do you want the blue the Blu-ray? And I'm like, No, I, I want to wait until there's a 4K because I enjoyed that movie so much that I just want to enjoy it. That 4K goodness. I, I wonder I'm gonna wonder how it looks in 4K because I usually few things on a 1080p screen like I was telling uh, Sebastian yesterday but I'm wondering if the practical effects might look better in 4k I have to break out the 4k TV pixel peep like I was doing with uh, Renfield which was a CGI gore but we're not here to talk about Renfield we're here to talk about cocaine bear but first I have a few questions so first I know the movie came out in February yeah But did you catch any trailers before seeing this movie? Yeah, so as many of you may not know, I'm a critic here in Puerto Rico. And I sometimes share the trailers, but I always try to like watch them first because I know sometimes people are going to ask me questions about the trailers. So I will always do that assignment of let's watch them on YouTube and then let's discuss them. So yeah, I watched the trailers a a lot of times, both in YouTube and also on theaters. Okay, and I don't know if you're cursed with the same thing I am, but somebody will ask if I've seen a trailer for a movie, and it'll be the one, just the one that's so obscure that I didn't see it. Yeah, it happens occasionally, like... Sometimes people will um, either ask me about something Marvel or DC, but sometimes they, they will be like this little indie movie that only three people have heard about it. Have you seen the trailer? And I'm like, no, I'll sometimes yes, because as 
I have to sometimes be in the loop, but yeah, sometimes it can be like, yeah, I didn't know about that movie. Yeah. Yeah. And I think tying it back into cocaine bear, I think personally, I think this is a movie that if I had not seen the trailers for, I don't think I would have been excited to see this movie when I, and for clarification, I think next thing we should talk about is how we saw it. Because I, I suspect that I saw it majorly different than you did. I saw it on Peacock because I think the same time, I think the same time Cocaine Bear was coming out, another movie was coming out. So I didn't see Cocaine Bear in theaters. I saw it on uh, Peacock. Yeah. So funny thing is that the same week that Cocaine Bear was in theaters here in Puerto Rico, there was another local production that was in theaters. It was like a double feature. And I was like worried how both movies were going to do because sometimes there tends to be like like wide margin of people that choose one movie over the other. But surprisingly, a lot of people didn't go out to see Cocaine Bear. Like, I know a lot of people that actually watched it in Peacock. But the thing is that in Puerto Rico, sometimes we don't get as many trailers for movies. For example, in local TV in Puerto Rico, you might not get that many trailers unless it's a big budget movie. But for example, I have TBS. USA, those channels, then you might get more promos for that type of movies. But yeah, so far, it it was just like that. Yeah, Yeah, it's interesting to say that a lot of people didn't see it in theaters where you were, because when I had seen when I went to that weekend or close to opening weekend, um, when Coconut Cane Bear was in my local theater, it felt like everyone there were two movies it, people were seeing. It was either the one I was seeing, which was, oh, what was that Lionsgate movie? Faith-based Lionsgate movie. Uh, oh, th- was it The Jesus Revolution? Yeah, Jesus Revolution, yeah. It was yeah. Around. Uh, so I saw that. So people were either seeing that, and that's what I saw instead of Cocaine Bear. But I, we, I almost did see Cocaine Bear. It was like a neck-and-neck neck kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah, people were either seeing that or Cocaine Bear. Yeah, yeah, it was interesting because I know that people, when I mentioned the word, the movie, they were like enthusiastic about it. But since there was not that much promotion here on the island, it was just like it went under the radar for that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. So you talk about lack of promotion. And I'm wondering, I know sometimes Universal will sell distribution rights. Did it, was it still Universal? Yeah. In Puerto Rico, just for a quick, like heads up, most movies are distributed by the same company. For example, if it's Disney, if it's Universal, sometimes what will happen is if it's an independent movie, maybe one of the distributors will buy it and do, let's say a type of arrangement, for example, There's this movie that debuted here on the island last week, which is called Malos Padres. It is a Dominican comedy. And even though it's by a Dominican, it's distributed by a Dominican house house distribution in that island. In Puerto Rico, it was acquired by Disney. So Disney distributed that movie to star the star thing they have. Yeah, to that. So it was a Disney distributed film, but it's still owned by Dominican Republic. Yeah. Yeah. And for those who aren't aware, I believe Star is uh, Disney's equivalent of Hulu in international territories. Yeah. the I think the major difference is that Star has more Latino content or it's more geared towards Latino audiences. Yeah. Yeah, and some places, I think I saw, was it Bastaram was streaming on Star or yeah. something like that? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. we actually got it because for some stuff, for Rico, okay, so for some things, Puerto Rico is part of the United States, for others, it's not. In terms of, do we have Disney Star, which is the name of the program? No, we do not because we have Hulu because it's part of the bundle and all that stuff. But in the rest of the world, 
instead of having Hulu, it's Disney Star. And I know this doesn't have to do that much with Cocaine Bear. Maybe you can have it for another discussion. But the fact is that I always believe that Hulu as its own platform does not need it to exist. Even though I enjoyed the content from Hulu, I always thought that it could have been like Star, which in many countries, it's like just a sub sub. Yeah, it's like a tile. Yeah, it's like a tile inside Disney Plus, and you just put a, a lock screen or H control, and that's it. Yeah, and maybe I'll have you on when Disney eventually buys Hulu from Comcast, because ever since, um, gosh, when did they buy Fox? That uh, was... 2019? Um, yeah, yeah, it was 2019, yeah. Yeah, ever since then, when they bought, I think, 33% of the company or something like that, whatever got them the majority share it's been written on the wall ever since then that hulu is gonna it's just gonna be a brand name now for disney plus yeah the situation it's complicated but let's get to let's get back to cocaine i think it's a more complicated subject but yeah yeah Yeah, first what were what expectations did you have about for cocaine bear I just wanted to have fun. It's one of those movies where you just want to have, you just want to see in case of cocaine bear, you just want to see the bear go crazy and kill all these humans. It's just, let's see, let's say a Godzilla movie or a King Kong movie. You just want to see that the monster go on a rampage and kill everyone. But I was expecting more comedy from cocaine bear. Especially from Margot Martindale. Yeah. Or as a BoJack Horseman, I don't know if you've seen it, but character yeah, I, actress Margot Martindale. Yeah, that that show's really good. I would say it's I you say it's under underappreciated. Underrated. Underrated, that's true. Underrated, yeah. BoJack Horseman's really good. Yeah. yeah, but I think I had the same I think I had the same expectations. So when I went on Peacock and watched the actual movie and saw what the movie was like yeah i it i was not vibing with it because and i don't think this is any spoiler but there's not really much kills going on here Um, yeah it's mostly about humans and hey there's a bear out in these woods but you see him for what i don't know 15 minutes of the movie like yeah that? it's yeah i okay so i'm not a, a film director yet but what i would have done is use like a, a our animatronic bear maybe i felt that would have benefited the movie a lot because yeah in this type of movies we don't necessarily want to know about the humans for me in case of cocaine bear the only story that mattered to me was alden Angwitz character that he played Ray Liotta's son and that was a good story and I feel like that was the only story in terms of humans that was necessary to the film like all the other stories were only plot devices to get the story going yeah I don't think I needed the uh, police element or anything like that like the side quest I'll, I'll just call it and I think what's particularly not concerning because that makes it sound like a grave mistake but i agree with the animatronic thing because i don't know if you saw at the oscars the cocaine bear bit yeah uh, where they had a guy in a costume play cocaine bear and those that costume looked pretty good i feel like you could have made a uh, a situation where you could have a guy in a bear suit or something of that nature the same studio is releasing uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, and I think those are all mannequins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's in October? Yeah, it's releasing in October. I'm actually worried because it's a day and date release, and Peacock does not have a good a good trajectory with those types of releases. Yeah, Evil Dies Tonight. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but yeah, at least for Cocaine Bear, I just got to say that I really like that opening scene because for those that don't know, this is based on a true story. The true story is basically about this bear that was found dead and had a lot of cocaine in the stomach. And that was because somebody was trying to get rid of drugs 
And so they basically, uh, they pushed it out of an airplane. And that's like the real story. That's it. It's just black and white. There's no gray area. It's just, that's just how it is. But there comes this movie that tries to, let's make it more funny, more appealing to people. And I feel like the trailers did that in a way that it got people hooked into the to the situation. But I feel like the movie tried to elaborate too much, tried to be too complicated for what needed to be the movie. But I got to say, that opening scene with Jane playing by Jefferson Starship was amazing. I feel that's one of the best opening scenes I ever seen to comedy, you know. Yeah, and that's the disappointing part about that movie, or this this movie, that rather, is it it almost it just feels like two separate movies where this this initial part is really good, and then it just the more the closer you get to the runtime, it just derails itself. Yeah, it, it feels exactly like two different movies. I would say that having the cops be involved in the movie do a lot of change because then it becomes like this good banks, robbers and cops kind of movie where I feel like maybe you should have leaned on more on the, oh my God, there's a bear loose and he might kill us, <laughs> you know? which I feel would have been a different type of movie but yeah i gotta agree that it feels like two different movies yeah yeah it fe felt like if you tried to make the uh, budget version of grand theft auto the movie but instead of like stealing cars and going into los santos or vice city or anything like that you're just like getting hunted by something and you also have cops behind you for whatever reason and i wouldn't be mad if the same director did a low budget Grand Theft Auto movie, by the way. I would love a Grand Theft Auto movie. But anyways, yeah, it just feels, again, unnecessary, where I think you could have done something like, oh, what's a good example? Not Barbarian, but that's a good example. But, like, something where it's just, hey, a kind of lurking in the shadows kind of thing, where you could cut around the CGI of the bear, where... And just say, hey, everything's at night for some reason. Don't question it. Yeah, I feel that they could have also done, like, I know it's uh, it's an example that I feel like Hollywood has been trying to do many times, but the Jaws thing where you don't necessarily need to see the bear all the time, but let's talk about the bear and create that tension and hype around it so that when we see the bear, we're like, oh, my God, this is scary it's something else i feel like the trailer tried to be too much dark comedy where the movie tried to be more dramatic crime thriller kind of thing yeah it and it's funny because of alden ehrenreich's connection to solo but it, at times the dark comedy vibes of it reminded me of what i imagined solo the original version of solo a star wars story being and not just because all Aaron Reich is in it. It just gave me that dark comedy vibe that I've noticed from Lego Movie, especially the second part with the Radiohead joke. But but no, I definitely think that, yeah, I don't know. It just, especially with Godzilla 2014, there has been a trend where, oh, we don't need to see the monster. But you also do want to see the monster because... That's the whole cocaine bear is the title, and you rarely see him in this. And it's, and I mentioned Godzilla for a reason besides a tangent, because it's a it's that prime example of what you're talking about, and b that Godzilla Monarch show got the trailer yeah. last week, and it's showing Godzilla, and you're like, I don't remember that in Godzilla 2014. That's interesting, but anyways, I. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I wonder if you could make something like this with, where it's something like Invisible Man, I think is what I was trying to think of, where you could have that in-between where you know that the person's lurking behind the corner, but you don't necessarily have to see it. Yeah, you could play a lot with, let's say, shadows or do stuff that was intrinsically funny because I feel like some people, that's what they 
been telling me it's I did get a few laughs, but it wasn't necessarily a funny film, which I totally get. It could have been a lot more funnier. You know what? Maybe a good storyline would have been only if we got three characters. We could have gotten Ray Liotta. We could have gotten uh, O'Shea Jackson Jr. and Alden. And maybe if you want to like have uh, a woman, Carrie Russell, in it, but just a quick cameo, that could have been that could have been good. You know? No, I know. No. I care. I guess we can get use this as a transition to talk about the acting, but. Carrie Russell does nothing for this movie. Absolutely nothing other than the equivalent of Finn. I, I almost forgot his name in uh, Rise of Skywalker, where it feels like Carrie Russell's just, oh, I gotta find my kid, I gotta find my kid. Yeah. And it just doesn't feel like she has much more motivation other than that. And in a movie where there's like a bear around, I feel like a mom would be like, Maybe let's do this instead. Maybe let's not go into the forest with a bear. Um, yeah, yeah. I just I just like, feel, I just feel like Carrie's, Carrie's character is more like, oh, so this is a household name. She's a, a renowned actress and all that stuff. Because let's look at it. If you look at the cast, like yeah, there's not a lot going on in terms of the humans. But there's a couple of notable characters. I feel like the studio or maybe director went like, okay, so maybe this is a, a movie that not many people are going to be interested in. But if we get this actors, we're probably going to get a little bit more eyes on it than if we're okay. just go with not unknown actors because not all of them are relatively known. Yeah. And if you want to, I think, want to have that name recognition, but not necessarily pay those big bucks, I feel like, like what you said, and still wanted to have a female character, I think Margot Martindale would be a better replacement, because I think her parts, as little as she's in it, I think really just lean a little bit more into that darker comedy that we were promised with the trailers, Yeah, and would have actually... Because there is actually a, I'm not going to get into spoilers here, but there is actually a really great narrative thread with her and, is it Jesse Tyler Ferguson? Yeah. Yeah, like, that actually worked for me. So I was like, okay, this works, and even if Elizabeth Banks wanted to be in the movie too as a random person who got killed, she, you could do that too. But yeah, I think if you if I had to have anyone else other than O'Shea Jackson Jr. and... Alden Ehrenreich and Ray Liotta. I just put Marco Martindale in there. Yeah, I feel like the movie could have benefited from a Conan O'Brien cameo. He did in Tornado. Oh. I feel that would have been real good because let's talk about, let's be real for a moment. Cocaine Bear gave a lot of Sharknado vibes. So maybe people yeah. were expecting something that crazy outrageous. Also like Tarantino that when there's a fire or something, there's a lot of blood going on. I feel that, that they could have leaned into that and it probably would have been a, a bit more memorable. Like not let's not just be so story driven, but more focused on let's have fun. Yeah. Yeah. I would have loved it turned up to 11. Um, and I don't know why this came up, maybe because I've been seeing it in my shorts a, a lot lately. But when you mentioned Tarantino, the scene that instantly came into my head that would work in this movie was, I guess, spoilers from a, for a movie that came out in 2009. Yeah. But in Inglorious Bastards, when the, when the movie theater goes up in flames, or even in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where the colonel shoots the Nazis, um, it reminded, yeah, that instantly came to mind. Yeah. Yeah, something they could ape. Imagine if at one point in the movie there was like this character needs to like not necessarily kill the bear but try to do something like uh, to back him off. So he pulls out a chainsaw, action evil dead style. Mm -hmm. That would have been a pretty funny moment, even if he doesn't kill the bear. That's something that people would have laughed a lot about it. You know? Or even. To go into your Conan cameo, you could have yeah. Conan as the guy who's playing against type and have him be like, I'm just going to fight the bear. 
I just gotta assert dominance and he'll back off and then have his head just chomped off by yeah by that, a bear. Oh my god, that would have been so funny. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, just little moments like that. I I feel like we're making a better movie than <laughs> what we got. Yeah. It's not a bad movie necessarily. Yeah. It's just I think an issue of I think we were promised one thing and then we got an entirely different thing. And I think this is why I've been asking about expectations going into movies. Um, yeah. Because especially with a movie like this, there was a very clear narrative of, oh, this is a dark comedy movie. And oh, look how zany it is. And then it's it's zany. Yeah, it could have been it could have been something else. Yeah. But that's actually happening a lot right now. I think that so, sometimes trailers are being misleading. But in terms of Marvel, their misleading is to have to hype plot points. But in, in other cases, I feel like they're actually trying to sell us another type of movie. It's something that that shouldn't be happening, I think. But still, it's going on. I don't think there's a rule against that. But I feel like sometimes movies should be more to the point with their trailers. Yeah, because I keep bringing up Universal movies, but Megan did a similar thing where it tried to be zany, but the movie wasn't really zany, even the unrated version, because when they released it on Peacock, I actually saw it twice. I saw it in theaters, and then I saw the unrated version on Peacock. Yeah. And I was like, um, this isn't gory, and this isn't zany. What kind of movie are you trying to be? It, yeah. But that trailer was like, oh, this is zany. And I think it just both movies crushed under their own expectations. Yeah, at least in terms of Megan, I had a good time with Megan. I did have a good time with both movies. But yeah, I got to agree that at least for me, Megan worked a little bit better because it did have a couple more funny scenes. And for example, her playing the piano when the dog disappears. And sorry if it's spoilers, it's been out a while. So yeah been out since march but she plays titanium yeah exactly and she's also they're doing the dancing dolls over at universal studios at the park so that's also really fun too oh they're doing megan at yeah they have let's say 10 people dressed as megan and they just at certain times during the night they go out and they dance oh that's awesome yeah but yeah but yeah, bringing it back to uh, Cocaine Bear. But yeah, I just... So let's see. We've talked about expectations. We talked about trailers. Yeah. We talked about acting. Yeah. Is What else screams at you for this movie? Um, That's a weird I phrase. Mean, but... sound, the soundtrack was pretty good. It was better than what I expected it to be. Since nowadays, movies don't necessarily have need to have good soundtracks. I'm always the type of person that if a movie has a great soundtrack, let's say Oppenheimer, let's say anything that's Hans Zimmer related, it's going to have a good soundtrack. And that motivates the movie to be something more than just a story. It's, it becomes basically an experience. I feel like in terms of Cocaine Bear, like I said, with Jane at the start, it was good. I would have liked to see like a montage of the bear just killing people. You could have put another 80s song similar to Jane and just have the bear like, let's go up with the kill count, buddy. Something like that, yeah. Or, or whatever that song is. Maybe I'm mixing this up with uh, Mulan. Or you could put I Need a Hero in there, like in a montage of the bear. Yeah, that, that would have been cool. Slow. It could have been I Need a Hero. It could have been a, a Elton John song, something like that. Or like Country Bear, something that, that screams, okay, I'm going to have fun at this point. Yeah, or even start the movie where the bear already has the cocaine, the titular cocaine in its system and then just have 30 minutes of the movie just be, here's him killing a bunch of bad guys or whoever in the forest. Yeah, the... Okay, so I know that at the first, there's these two tourists and they're like taking pictures and that kind of stuff. I would have looked, I know that the guy is important because at the end of the movie, he basically tells them where the cape is. 
But maybe I would have put someone else in the group and have the two of them survive. But sometimes during the movie, the other guy dies. And it's just a funny way of... It's also about the kill count. I guess the best way to like, say it is like with the gut butcher between Thor and Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. Thor Ragnarok, not nah, Thor Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder. We're basically told he killed a lot of a lot of gods, and we're like, show, don't tell. So I guess the movie could have also benefited from something like that. Just have a lot of kids there. They don't have to be... Uh, just have a couple of extras get murdered. Not for real, but in terms of the movie. And I guess that would have been really different. Imagine if the park was somehow really packed because there wasn't a hippie convention or something like that. I guess that would have played a little bit more into the film. Yeah, I think the simple way to fix it would have just been and to get people to stop writing negative articles about the like, oh, two kids get high on cocaine. I feel like you could have just said, oh, they're on a camping trip. And, uh, not a camping trip, a field trip. A, yeah. a field trip to the park because that's something that like Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts do a ton. And you could just have them there and then be like, oh, now there's also people hiking on the other end of the park. It's a it's a park. The bear yeah. is in a public park. Why yeah. are people not there? I just feel like the movie tried to do two things at the same time. One was try to be funny. And the other one was to try to be as close to the real thing as possible. And I feel that somehow didn't help the movie because I feel like if they wanted to be fun, like you said earlier, crank it up to 11. We don't need to we don't need to think of this movie as if this was the real thing. We wanted to see it as something really funny because we, my friends and I, we had this kind of joke that when the bird inhaled the cocaine, it was like Popeye's. Let's do something like that. It's funny, zany, gory. I could have been. It could have been so much better, man. Yeah. Yeah, and I just think of what could have been really because I just, man, it. I don't think I have been so let down by a horror movie this year. And I, I've seen Megan. It's not my favorite, but at least it like did what it said um, yeah. it was going to do. Whereas here, this didn't really do that. But yeah, going back a little bit, I definitely do think, again, that if we had gone zanier and strayed further, like you said, from the actual story, because, mind you, when Cocaine Bear came out on Peacock, they also released that documentary, The Real Cocaine Bear, or whatever it was called. So you could have just said, hey, here's the fantasized version uh, 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 over here. Here's what the zany version is. And also, after you watch it on Peacock, it'll start the 10-second timer for the real cocaine bear. So then you're like, oh, this is a real story. Yeah, it could have been It could have been uh, way different, yeah. But in terms of the movie, it sounds like we're being really negative with the movie, at least... I really enjoyed the movie. I would have watched it again, but I know it's. I know that if I want to watch a really funny movie, I won't necessarily watch Cocaine Bear, but there's uh, a lot of points in there that I really enjoyed. I, and if you want to think about it, the beginning with a Jane, there's another movie that starts out that way. I think it's Wet Hot American Summer with Paul Rod, which mm-hmm. also uses the same song. Yeah. Yeah, and and if you go if we're picking backing off of the Conan cameo, you could have Paul Rudd come in there and just have him that clip he he used to play on Conan. Yeah. Just have him reenact that. That's his cameo. Yeah. It's not I, even in the movie. Yeah, it it could have been so much different, yeah. But yeah, I Yeah, and Needless to say, I do agree we are, we are being negative, and I probably would watch this again. But again, I, if I'm looking for a comedy, I'll watch Scott Pilgrim or Step Brothers or, oh, what was that one I just watched? Or I'll watch it, I just watched it this morning, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. Yeah, 
it was really good. I feel like that's one of the underrated comedies of underrated animated comedies of this year because I had so much fun watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I that's one of the ones that I want to watch again because I feel like the energy that those kids bring into their voices it just mm -hmm. really fun it's just really fun i know there's that clip going around which is they're like just improvising hey what's up yeah. that's what we want to see that's the type of comedy we want to see that was super yeah. fun yeah and that just came to paramount plus today on september 19th which is yeah. why i could watch it because i don't want to like i said with sebastian with elemental yesterday who actually recommended it to me before I even knew it was coming to Paramount Plus that tomorrow or today yeah. as of recording. And I was not expecting that. But anyways, yeah, really good movie. Everyone should check it out. But yeah, what else? I think, what else can we cover with this movie? I feel like... We Mark, basically yeah. made, made a, a dent on the whole movie. There's not much to say besides maybe where they film like the locations were pretty good they were pretty good i guess that part of the the plot that gets a little bit lost is the part of the police mm -hmm. using police work there's also the storyline with the dog remember the dog there's yeah things yeah yeah and this you reminded me of a scene that i really liked i'm not i'm gonna dance around spoilers on this but there's a scene at night with Ray Liotta and Carrie Russell that I just loved how it was shot. Um, just the blues really popped. I feel like they weren't shooting day for night uh, or anything like that. It, it looked like another Universal movie. Yeah. Nope. It. I feel like it's really hard to get nighttime scenes. I really just appreciated how that looked. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you on that. That night scene was pretty good. It was pretty good. Yeah, and the whole thing where I think this is in the same scene where, let's see, how can I do this without talking spoilers? Basically, there, there's a bag and it, it's on a tree and trying to figure that out was a really fun story beat for me. Yeah, it truly was. So I feel like we basically covered what we could about this movie. But so, final rating? Man, I want to go with a 7 out of 10 because it's just, it's fun. It could have been something else. Like, I could watch and maybe I'm bored on a, on, a, on a night or something like that. So, for me, it gets a 7 out of 10. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. If we're using the letterbox scale of stars, 3, 3.5, somewhere mm -hmm. around there for me, because which would convert to I believe six six point five yeah. out of ten or somewhere around there because it's just it it reminds me of and I was talking about this with somebody else this week on Discord. I don't know if you're watching it, Strange Planet, where I could just have it on in the background while I'm doing yeah. other things. And I feel very much I could do that with this movie. I feel and that's not a disservice to the movie itself. It just it feels like there's so much of the movie I could have just said, I don't need to see this part or I could skip over. Yeah, it's some people will call it it's something I could watch while I'm folding laundry. It's that type of movie. And it's it doesn't mean that it's good. It implies it's not necessarily a good movie, but something that you can watch and that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much, yeah, that it, you can watch it and decide for yourself. I'll have the link to where wherever it is now i don't know if it's on peacock or prime video or wherever now but i'll have a link to that in the podcast show notes so before we go i posted my el conde and elemental podcast discussions with ann stucci and sebastian zavala respectively el Con ann came on for el conde sebastian came on for elemental and then i just want to thank patrons real quick Ambula Bula, Brian Scuttle, Joseph Davis, who you might know from Sif Pop, Matthew Simpson, also IFSC member of Awesome Friday, and Tom Blackburn for giving me the idea. So if you want to become a patron, head on over to patreon.com slash austinbmedia or austinb.media slash support for more information about my Patreon. And then if you 
I found out recently, I don't know if you know about this, but it, uh, Patreon and Spotify put together an integration to be able to listen to audio versions of this podcast and other places that have it enabled on Spotify when you connect your Patreon and Spotify accounts directly in the app. So if you want to listen to these discussions 24 hours early, just connect those accounts and I think you can subscribe straight from the app. So with that, thank you for listening to the Austin B Media Podcast. I've been your host, Austin Belzer. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on wherever you like to listen to this or watch it because there's also a video version. Hi, people are who are watching. I think it's also on YouTube too. And just leave a rating wherever you can and review on wherever you can. I hear it helps out a ton. I don't know if that's actually a real fact, but people have been saying it since 2006. So I'm just going to go with it. Uh, you can follow me on social media at Austin B Media everywhere except for Twitter because Twitter support will not give me the at Austin B Media handle for whatever reason. I do not know the reason. Emmanuel, where can we find you on social media and where, you, where can we find your work? Yeah, as I said earlier, all my content is mostly in Spanish. There's a few videos out in English. Basically, you can get me at www.moviesquadpr.com. We're also in Instagram and Twitter at moviesquadpr. And if you want to follow me, I'm at Sweet Thunder in Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, I'll make sure there's links to that in the YouTube. Let's see, where do I upload it? YouTube. Spotify, because I use podcasters for Spotify to upload these episodes, and Patreon, and where are the website too. But thank you all again for listening and watching, and to Emmanuel for coming on. I think I'm going to have you on again in a, a few weeks to talk about yeah. the creator. Yeah. So I can't wait to talk about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Gareth I saw, yeah, Gareth Edwards. I saw it yesterday, and oh my God, I was blown away. I want to see it again in an IMAX screen. Because I know it's going to be amazing. Yeah, I, if, fingers crossed, my, I've got a, I was talking to Sebastian about this yesterday when we were talking about Elemental. I have a 68-foot IMAX screen in my local theater. So I'm hoping oh. that the creator gets put in that theater as well. Because seeing Oppenheimer in IMAX was noise. Yes. Uh, but with gotta... that, yeah, yeah go ahead. No, I gotta agree with Oppenheimer. It was an amazing experience in IMAX. Yeah, it was like there was top to bottom. So we we sat all the way in the back. And one day, whenever Christopher Nolan decides to release it on Blu-ray, I'll have somebody on to talk about it. And I guess on that note, you can expect, I just scheduled a podcast discussion talking about the Toronto International Film Festival with Thomas Stoneham Judge. That should be live this Sunday for patrons or yeah saturday or sunday and like we discussed before we came on something you said last night i'm gonna inter interview the director i think this time tomorrow so i better get to watching it at that thank you again emmanuel for coming on and i'll see everyone else next time yeah thank you so much thank you <laughs>